so you've got a new flywheel and maybe even a spare spool. But what's the best way to set them up with the correct amount of backing and fly line? How much backing you put on a reel is incredibly important. Not enough and you aren't using the reel to its full capacity, which will decrease retrieve speed and honestly just doesn't look good. Too much backing beneath the fly line and the reel is likely to jam because the fly line hits the frame as you reel in. Sometimes you can get lucky just by guessing how much backing to put on, but it's pretty darn hit or miss. The method I'm going to show for setting up the reel requires a bit of work, but you're guaranteed the perfect amount of backing each and every time. In a nutshell, what you're going to do is put on your fly line and put enough backing over top of it to fill the reel to the correct amount. Then strip everything off and put it on in the correct order. First backing, then fly line. I told you it sounds like a lot of work, but as you'll see, there are a few tricks that can really speed the process. The first thing is to simply ballpark how much backing you're going to need. For many trout reels, but not all, 100 yards of 20 pound test backing will be enough. Something to hold both the backing spool and your reel will help tremendously. I've been using an old busted spinning rod for years that has a bent piece of galvanized wire taped to it capable of holding different size spools. Using the rig, I'm going to put a 5 weight weight forward line along with 20 pound test backing onto a modern large arbor reel. As I said in the beginning, I'm going to put the fly line on the reel first. Begin by carefully removing the ties that help to maintain the line on the spool. Also, notice how the free end of the line has a sticker which you want to leave in place. Although not absolutely necessary, you may find it easier to remove the reel spool before the next step. Put a piece of tape on that free end of line. Adhere the tape to the arbor of the reel spool and then reassemble the reel. Get your fly reel firmly secured in the reel seat and then place the fly line on your spool holder. Guide the fly line evenly across the reel with the fingers of your right hand. It doesn't have to be perfect, just relatively even. Most fly lines really aren't all that long, so you can do this fairly quickly. When you reach the front end of the fly line, get it onto the reel and then use another piece of tape to hold it. Now, locate the free end of the backing and give it a small piece of tape and adhere it to the reel. Place the backing spool on the spool holder and start cranking. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Backing has a much thinner diameter than fly line and 100 yards or more is quite a bit. Just take your time and try to put it on as evenly as possible. If you continue watching this video till the end, you'll see a faster way of doing this. Keep filling the reel until the backing is about a pencil diameter from the frame. Don't sweat it if there's still fly line peeking through. Now you know exactly how much backing will fit on the reel with that particular fly line so you can snip the backing from the spool. As you can see, I have a little bit left over. Next comes the fun part. If you don't already have a cordless drill, you need to get one. You're also going to need a 3 8 by 16, 1 and 3 quarter inch long section of threaded rod or cutoff bolt. This size happens to fit really well with many fly line spools. You'll also need an empty fly line spool in addition to the spool you just took the line off of. The thread should grip the spool fairly well, so it will spin even when there's tension put on it. All I can say guys is that a setup like this is really worth having and saves a ton of time. Place a piece of tape on the end of the backing coming from the reel and then tape it to the empty spool on the drill. Loosen the drag on your reel all the way, then use the drill and spool to pull the backing off the reel. Kind of move the drill back and forth to get the backing onto the spool evenly. To get the fly line off the reel, put a piece of tape on the spare spool with the backing and unthread it from the drill. Then place the empty spool that the fly line came on onto the drill. Untape the fly line from the reel and adhere it to the empty spool. Hit the trigger on the drill and guide the line evenly onto the spool. The complete fly line should come off the reel in the jiff. 
and congratulations, you've made it all the way back to square one as if you've done nothing at all. Next, you can pick up that spool with the precisely measured amount of backing on it and tie a double or triple surgeon's loop in the free end. I like to make the loop 8 to 10 inches long. Remove the spool from the reel. Reach into the loop to pull through the backing, creating a secondary loop. You want to orient this form loop around the spool so the end of the first loop points up toward the reel seat like so. This will prevent the backing from spinning around the arbor. Place the spool back on the reel and take a few cranks to get the backing started on the arbor. Then, position the backing spool on the spool holder. Yes, you need to get all that backing onto the reel once more. And this time, you have to do it evenly and with a fair bit of tension applied using the fingertips of your right hand. As you've already experienced, this can be a lengthy process, but fortunately, there's an easier way than hand cranking. First, remove the line spool and the threaded arbor from your drill. I made these things with a little bit of hardware and the plastic cups that go on the ends of chair legs. I have them in different sizes to fit different reel arbors, and even have one that I've cut some teeth into which will work on just about any fly reel. You want the fit on these things to be snug enough to spin the reel, but not super tight. Place the appropriately sized cup into your drill and rather than reeling the backing off the reel, slip the cup onto the reel arbor and let her rip. You want to add a bit of tension as the backing goes on, but don't squeeze too hard or you'll likely burn your finger. It's pretty amazing how fast, tight, and accurately you can get the backing onto the reel by doing it this way. Remove the end of the backing from the spool and once again create a double or triple surgeon's loop that's about 8 to 10 inches long. I like to make the loop long, so I can slip it through the loop on the appropriate end of the fly line, the one with the little tag that says, attached to the backing, and then around the entire spool so the loops interlock nice and neatly, like so. With the loop-to-loop -loop connection made, you can finally remove the little tag. Place the fly line spool back onto the spool holder, and for the final time, wind the fly line onto the reel under tension and as evenly as possible. Yes, you can use the drill if you'd like, but I think it's actually a bit easier to do it manually. When you reach the end of the fly line, check to make sure you've maintained the same amount of gap between the line and the reel's frame. You can then remove the reel from that nasty old spinning rod, put it on a real fly rod, add a leader, tie on a fly or two, and go fish. Yes, this method takes some time and a few extra tools, but I think the results are worth it. The method works for just about any combination of reel, fly line, and backing you can imagine, and you end up with the correct amount of backing on the reel each and every time. There's no trying to measure how many yards, looking up manufacturer specs, understanding complex mathematical formulas, or simply guessing. It doesn't matter whether it's a large steelhead salmon reel that holds hundreds of yards of backing along with a shooting line, a head, and a tip. The reel will be filled to the correct amount. Even if you're spooling up a reel with a far from traditional line system, this method works. Give it a try.